Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Greg McCloskey from ForexLive.com. This is a Forex quick look. I'm going to take a look at the dollar versus yen as we head toward the end of the week and we head into the new trading week. All right, the uh, story remains the same for this uh, currency pair that I've been uh, harping on for, well, the last couple of days at least. Uh, one is the uh, 100 arrow moving average. That's the blue line in this chart. You see the number of different times the price has come down and tested that 100 arrow moving average including more recently in trading here today. Now, we did also fall below the 100-hour uh, moving average right through here uh, earlier today. That was a uh, big uh, move to the downside in a relatively short amount of time. But the price uh, failed on that break and moved back up to the upside. And as you can see, we came right back down to that 100-hour moving average, finding support buyers. The good news about uh, this is that uh, as time goes by, the 100-hour moving average moves higher. And so it becomes an easier hurdle to get to and through uh, the question then would be, uh, can it go further? Can it get through these other levels that have since uh, started to form, including the 200-hour moving average? And this swing area through here, which uh, comes in between 149.47 and 149.54. You may also look at this uh, this period, this period area between 149.63 and 70 as levels to get to and through, uh, I, you know, just uh, over the last uh, few days, uh, we have this amount of different uh, lows that come in between that seven pip trading range. So uh, that that's a problem when you have this consolidation as you uh, and you stay above a moving average, you start to create other levels that you need to get to and through. So get below the uh, 63 level, get below the 200 hour moving average, get below this swing area low. Uh, and we still then have the 38.2% retracement to get to and through uh, and then uh, down to the 50%. That's just of this move from this low to this high. So uh, things start to build on. But uh, the first thing that has to happen if the sellers are to take more control is to get below the 100 hour moving average. That's paramount. And it's got to stay below that level. None of this, folks. It's got to stay below the level. So now uh, on the top side, uh, what do we know? Well, we know we have the 150-itis uh, problem that uh, this uh, currency pair has. Uh, that is that the uh, market is scared to death that if the price were to go above 150, the Bank of Japan would come in, sell the dollar versus yen, or potentially change their policy where they don't target the uh, yields anymore. They let the, them uh, free, uh, free uh, move freely, uh, and that would uh, lead to a sharp move to the downside. So if I were to, to characterize uh, a uh, trading risk, it would probably be that uh, to the downside. Why? Even though the bias is more bullish because uh, of things like uh, these, uh, you know, these fast moves on policy changing from the uh, Bank of Japan. So we do get this uh, apprehension to move higher because the risk is probably greater on the downside that uh, even if you have a stop below the 100 hour moving average, it's uh, probably going to get filled somewhere down here. Uh, so uh, that would be a issue uh, for traders uh, going into the new trading week. So what does that say to you as a trader? Well, you can stay away from it if you don't like that risk or um, if you want to uh, sell, look for uh, levels to sell against. Uh, with a stop above and just hope that uh, maybe maybe you get something uh, from the Bank of Japan that helps you uh, without it going surging to the upside. It's an idea. My name is Greg Michalowski. I hope you have a great weekend and good fortune with your trading. Bye-bye now.